I'm always cool with today's Transformers until I do something like this. T-Man 978, chill review. Hello everyone, T-Man 978. Yay. Right now you're watching a chill comparison review between 2007's Camaro Michael Bay movie series, Bumblebee, and 2020's studio series Bumblebee, which is the 2007 concept Camaro Bumblebee. So, right off top, yeah, there's a definite weight change and the plastic quality change and size and man years ago around 2007 ish like they kept telling they maybe 2008 ish sometime after hurricane katrina they warned us that they would have to raise the price of action figures because of price of petroleum going up and whatnot i think the price went down and but once prices started going up they never came back down but anyway, it took a while, but everything was retailing. The deluxe class retailed for $9.99 for years of my collection. Or my collecting, I mean. And around 2011-ish, 2012, that's when they started going up a couple dollars. Next thing we know, they're 20 bucks. So they were saying that they're going up in the price because of they wanted to keep the toys the same quality that they were but around 2015 or close to 2015 ish they started going up on the price but the quality of the toys was drastically different so yeah it, it, i don't know what to believe to be honest but anywho here they are besides the size difference this one is a more richer or more mustardy yellow than this one. This one is a brighter yellow. This one has the pen striping around the edges, which is more movie accurate. It has the painted logo, painted headlights. The fog lights under here are a different color, and they painted the grill, thank goodness. They have silver in the wheels. The window is... A, like a clear transparent so you can see everything going on in there for the most part like around here it gets kind of dark because of the darker pieces and here is his weapon storage on the studio series you can just plop that off and here's that detail right there you see they have the lights painted the pinstripe and still goes to back there it has this antenna detail and all of this detail right there now let's bring in this figure I guess this one, the newer one, would be more accurate because you see this detail right there, which this one doesn't have. In fact, they changed a lot down there. So, well, you know what? That's to port the Dagon weapon in. So I'm not sure if that's actually supposed to be there. But you can see right here, they painted these. It doesn't have the pinstriping on there. It kind of looks like it has something, but that's just the breakup in the paneling. And in the front, the lights on the bottom, where the fog lights are silver. And I don't know. This is probably more accurate to the actual 2007 concept car than, than this is. This is a more modern version. The 2007 one has the actual Camaro logo right here. And it's actually picked out in silver paint. The doors are painted. Actually, all these doors are painted, but everything's a different shade of yellow so yeah this one doesn't have the little antenna probably because it breaks up right there and the windows are tinted blue so you can't see things on the inside they both have the same gas cap right there so yeah here is what they look like on the bottom both of them you can see their heads plain as day and yeah they both, well, this one rolls definitely well. This one was rolling well before I did, what did I do? I don't know. I think everything is, it's, yeah, you know what? I didn't try rolling it on this material. Hold on. 
yeah, it's scraping up in this area. Maybe these arms are pressed in, so that's a point I'm going to have to take away from it. In my comparison reviews, it's mostly just to show y'all differences. It's not me putting one toy against one per se. It's just to show you the differences, and you can decide on which one you like better. Yeah, this is sticking out way too much, and there's no way that I can get that oriented differently. Let's see. The wrists don't hinge in or anything. So, no. That is definitely hanging down too low. Now, this one I was able to get all the pieces tabbed into place. It's all solid. Right here, I have an issue getting this part right. And up in the front, it kind of wants to separate, it looks like. But it's still mostly together. His weapon integrates inside of the vehicle where this one sits on the outside. Here they both are in their robot modes, and I'm going to tell you that this one, even though people were complaining that these figures were a little bit too complicated, from car mode to robot mode, it kind of does a lot of the work for you. If you pull on the feet, separate things, pull on the feet, boom, they, the legs transform themselves. Pull on the arms, the pull this down, everything pretty much feels like it just transforms itself. Now, getting it back to robot mode, I'm going to have to do that again and see what that's like. I remember that being difficult as far as knowing where to put the arms. This guy is a lot more involved than him. A lot more. And things bump into each other and they don't want to come untabbed and whatnot. Yeah, it's, it's kind of a little bit of a nightmare. But you can see what they look like. And let's flash a picture of the movie Bumblebee on the screen real quick. And then have you look at these. Now, this guy had two issues when they made him. This one only has one. Even though Hasbro said they worked side by side with industrial lights and magic and, and the designers of the robot modes and whatnot, I, I call BS. They said they tried to, to put into their head, drill into their heads that Transformers transform. They go from one sheet to the to a robot shape and it's not magic they don't morph but it's impossible they they probably heard that but they didn't listen because they had things in the movie like you have the tail lights hanging off his back and he transformed in a way that was impossible so they were not able to replicate that all at that at all back then plus on top of that, they were going off of like concept images and not the finalized version. This one had the had the privilege of being able to use the finalized version because it's been finalized for over 10 years. So the robot mode is definitely way more accurate. Like his key things like the shin design, the, the toe design right there, the arms I didn't transform right. They puff out on the side and look like this in the movie. The chest design looked more like a bug face right there. They were able to get these things hanging off the back of the, the wings or back of the doors. Actually, in the movie, they hung out down here. It's no way they can replicate the back, apparently, because even with the masterpiece figure right here, who is highly detailed in like things like the face and the shape of the legs and whatnot in certain areas it's they still weren't able to perfect the back they did a good job of hiding that windshield up in there i had to give them that but it's still not 100 percent perfect and this figure amazingly his wheels would end up on his back like somewhere closer into here amazingly they were able to try to get that design almost right if this would fold in a little bit more depending on how you have it twisted they can kind of be there but you can't have the wings in the right place so they did a good job with this part trying to make the wings come out like like that and sit more inside because the wings were kind of coming from the inside of his back damn near no bumblebee toy that's transformable has been able to replicate that they kind of got it more in right here but the wheels 
are still out there instead of on his back. So, yeah, and this is the masterpiece, if I didn't say that directly. Let's start looking at this guy. I showed him all around and whatnot. Here is his face. The face is not 100% accurate. I mean, it's close, but they they should have made the whole face silver. And I don't know why I haven't in all these years just painted that with a silver Sharpie. But the face isn't all that 100% accurate. And you know what his head design reminded me of? It reminded me of a lot of Waspinator. So it's sort of like they took Beast Wars designs when coming up with these guys. This is more movie accurate. He does have the dead eye syndrome. But this is more in line with what the head should be looking like as far as the movies. But let's just get into the articulation. The head is on a ball joint and a hinge so that can hinge back and forth. And tilt a little bit and of course rotate. The shoulders are interesting because of the way they're designed. He kind of has a butterfly joint, kind of, and it's on a ball joint. It's on a swivel right here, and it bends right there. These pieces of the car hanging off is definitely not accurate. And the wrist is on a ball joint, so it can go up and down and rotate. The waist is on a ball joint as well. So he has ab crunch, really. But he doesn't have a traditional waist swivel. Because this kibble right there gets in the way. You can't really move it up that much. So it's sort of like he rotates like that instead of a traditional waist swivel. His hips are on a ball joint that goes out that far. And you get that much give as far as thigh rotation. But he has no type of rotation. The knees bend right there until it bumps on this kibble. The toes can do that. The foot can do this and that. And if you bend it, it, it doesn't move right. But that's an example of his auto transforming thing I was talking about. This guy. Unfortunately, he permanently has on this battle mask. His neck is on a ball joint. You don't get a ton of wiggle out of that. The shoulders are on a ball joint. So you can do all this. They can they can hinge up in here due to transformation. The elbow is on a ball joint. The wrist does nothing. He does have a waist right there. Legs go out to the side. Come forward and back. And he has a swivel right there above the knee. This is adjustable. And if you move it out the way, you can use this as a uh, ankle pivot. You can technically use it, but it doesn't really look right. The feet go down. They don't really come up. They don't come up at all. On this guy, you can see that they painted the crotch and put the license plate detail right there. Put some paint up in here. They didn't paint any of that on this guy. And here's what he looks like from the back. He does have a stand port, but yeah, did I bend? I didn't bend his knee. But one thing that's cool about him, he does look more movie accurate. Like none of them have been able to, none of the toys have been able to perfect this like this figure has. Even the movie masterpiece didn't. But while I'm on him, here is his weapon. It's just a black piece of plastic. You peg it into the hand on the five millimeter peg. And there you go, that right there. The old one, his gun is more involved. It looks like this. He has a grip grip like that. You can go in his hand, cover in his hand to be a blaster like this. On top of that, if you split it a little bit and start pulling it apart. It turns into a blade. I don't believe he ever used this in the movie. And the funny thing is, the Transformer Cyberverse has a blade weapon like this as well. So maybe they took the idea to use that, use this from this toy right here. I can't think of if any of the other Bumblebees had a blade in the hand. But yeah. 
and it just transforms back the same way. One things you had to worry about with this guy, these used to pop off on me all the time. I think I went ahead and just crazy glued it in there because they were driving me up the wall. I think used to fall off all the time. But definitely, this figure, the articulation is junk. The accuracy is not there at all. But he feels solid. And the plastic quality is really, really good. And it has more paint than this dude. One thing that's an odd choice that for this guy, he they did put a little tiny Autobot logo there. And here is his head detail, though, since I didn't go into that. Still reminds me of a Waspinator. They didn't, they didn't give him a little logo right there. And I'm trying to see if they didn't give him his little side view mirror things right there. They, his collar that he normally would have. All right, I haven't watched a ton of videos on this Studio Series Concept Camaro Bumblebee besides Emgo. And I didn't see anybody do a head swap, so yeah. But... I found out if you take the head from the last night movie, it can fit on this body perfectly. The ball joint is a tiny, tiny bit bigger on this dude. So this head on this body is a little bit too snug, a tiny bit, but it still works. But who cares? Once you swap with this head, you probably won't want to go back and it's nice and stiff on there. So that's good. So if anybody who wanted a solution if you can still find this guy there's a solution right there and as you can tell there's a great size difference in both modes i think he looks even smaller in freaking robot mode this is nowadays this would be a voyager class which is really really freaking sad that this is a voyager class and back in the day it was just a deluxe the only thing good about this Bumblebee's height, and I think when they went with scale, they did that to really trick us. Because they were like, you know what? Let's make all these in scale. So now they can give us smaller toys because that's the real scale, but they can still charge us the full price for deluxe. Now here's the one cool thing about that scale situation is it's pretty accurate to what we saw in the movie. I kind of feel like Optimus was a little bit more tall than, than he is right here. But I could be wrong. But yeah, I definitely remember Ironhide and Ironhide and Ratchet being taller than Bumblebee. So that's good to go right there. And they're still shorter than Optimus, which was accurate to the movie. So this is cool. I don't have pretty much any of the, the Transformers that came out from the movie from back then sold damn near everything so there won't be a comparison to that bumblebee besides this right here and as you can see he's tall as freaking iron Eye. so i can at least give you that comparison and that's why this guy is a voyager class nowadays here he is next to barricade he's a little bit taller i guess i can stretch barricade's legs up man they're kind of eye to eye that way. Kind of eye to eye. He's still a little bit taller than the Studio Series Barricade. But yeah, here is what you're working with. This one has better accuracy, accuracy to the movies. This one has better quality and it's a bigger figure for the money that it cost back then. So yeah, it's disappointing that things we get charged more, but we don't get the same quality or the same amount of plastic that we used to get that is greatly disappointing but um yeah this was a fun trip down memory lane y'all let me know in the comments which one you like better regardless to what they look like and whatnot or just based upon everything that i talked about you let me know which one you would prefer um i have an opinion but i'm not gonna give that here anyway Thank y'all for watching this. Until next time, T Man 978. Out of here. Click, click the videos. Click the videos, baby. Click, click the videos. You should really click these videos. Click, click the videos. Click those videos, baby. Click, click the videos. You really.
really should click those videos. Click that shit.